Hello guys and welcome back to 2017. I hope you had the best New Year's Eve and the best 2016. Happy New Year. Welcome back to my channel. So today I figured it was about time that I went through all of my favourite kind of ride or die products for 2016 and because I didn't really fancy talking through everything I have tried on everything on my face, on my hair for you to see. So it's kind of like this is my full face of ride or die and you get to see exactly what went into it. So I might as well just get straight into this because it's going to be quite a hefty video. I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so kicking off my bare skin, first of all, with serum, and my favourite of the year is definitely the Armani Prima Serum. It's just really hydrating, it feels wonderful on the skin, it's a really nice base to pot your moisturiser over the top of. It has this great pipette, just into your fingertips. It also smells incredible. It's just one of those products that I like really highly enjoy putting on every day. That's why it gets number one spot. Okay, next up, moisturiser. There were two in the running for this and I felt like one of them really gave me the benefits that I truly want to see every day that I do my foundation and that is like super dewy, hydrated skin. So I did have to go for La Mer and whilst it does cost an absolute fortune and I'm already at the very bottom of this amount, in fact this might be the last time I ever use it, I really, really want to buy a new tub and I think I will. That's how much I love this. So I like to take that onto the back of my hand. Oh, so on. And then I use the Renewal Oil, which again just makes that super dewy finish to the skin. I mean, I have quite dry skin, so this works super well for me. But it also has a lot of kind of skincare properties inside this, which just make it so luxurious. I just mix the two together and then apply it onto the skin. And also, if you're wondering, the two other moisturisers I probably could have named as well would have been the Armani Prima Balm, which is absolutely beautiful. And I also would say the Lush Million Dollar Moisturiser as well, which, which if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I wore pretty much every single time I did my makeup. Okay, next up would be primer. And in honesty, I don't always prime my face. Again, because it's quite dry, I often just go in with moisturiser and then straight on my foundation. But if I had to choose an absolute favourite, and in total honesty, like I can't, choose products just for the sake of it. I honestly would again go for the La Mer. This is the perfecting treatment and again it's extremely pricey but unlike the moisturiser this has so much product inside it and will last me for ages but it just gives another really hydrating finish to the skin whilst priming it and prepping it and just overall perfecting. I just love putting this on. Okay, so this is one that most people usually like to know about and that is foundation. I've had quite a few over the year, but when I thought about it, I thought of one especially that I used over and over and over. And whenever anyone asked me what my favorite foundation was, I would always say this. And that would be the Armani Maestro Glow. It's just super dewy. It has an oil consistency. It has five essential oils in here that evaporate over the day. So it just gives you that ultra dewy yet pigmented finish. It's so flawless. I love it so much. So I'm gonna mix two and four together to get my shade because I'm in between a tan. But I'm also gonna mix it with one that I have been obsessed with now for the past two and a half, three months. And that would be the NARS Velvet Matte Skin Tint, which I can see is more of a tinty moisturizer with a bit more pigmentation and a bit more of a fuller coverage. Well, it's kind of more medium coverage than a tinted moisturizer would be. But honestly, I don't go anywhere without this now, which is why I had to mention it. It's so brilliant. It's in the shade Alaska. It's like such a good shade for me and I love mixing it with anything else I'm using because it just gives a little bit more coverage I just don't know it just makes my skin look really really flawless and great so I'm gonna apply a little bit of this alongside some of the Maestro Glow. And now with that huge concoction on the back of my hand, I'm gonna use my favorite foundation brush that I've been using whenever I'm applying foundations like this. And that would have to be this one, the Clinique. It's almost like a duo fiber brush, but when you apply it, it just sort of, rather than taking up all the foundation into the brush, it allows you to get so much product off of the brush and onto your face. So I find I use this as my first dip into the foundation first of all. Then I'm going to use like my favourite kind of face tool. It's got to be the Beauty Blender. I have a few of these now. I cannot live without them. And that's when I just go 
back over all the product and blend it in. Okay, concealer is like the next product that everyone seems to like to know about because there's so many concealers on the market. Some work, some don't, and they're just so many to choose from. So in honesty, I often use a big concoction every day, change it up every day, so it would be pointless in me saying this is my absolute favourite because if it was, I would wear it every single day. But one I would definitely say made a lot of the year was the Bare Minerals Bare Skin. I always got this in fair, I think, but such a brilliant concealer. I absolutely adore this one, but that's all run out now. Otherwise, big, big fan of the Burberry Cashmere Concealer with this super cute sponge tip. It just works extremely well. And if not, then the Kevin Aquan Sensible Skin skin enhancer just kind of like that bad boy thick concealing product that will just clear up everything so so this will take some of the back of my fingertip and just dab on like i said this is one thick heavy duty concealer but it really works and it really does the job and i've got quite a bit of redness today so could do with some help Okay, so full base applied, it's exactly how I like it, like super dewy, really kind of hydrated looking, pretty flawless, full coverage base. Can't really cover up some of these spots because they're just uncoverable, so I'm just living with it. But generally this is how I like to get my base to look. So those are the products I generally go to if I'm after this sort of finish. So bronzer, and there are two or three I've sort of used a lot, especially one over the past few months that's totally blown me away, and I wish I'd had it for the past few years, in honesty, and that is the Soleil Tan de Chanel and I've seen so many people using this I don't know why I didn't buy it sooner but it just works it's such a dream with my skin and I just adore using it so so much so I'll just apply a bit of that first and I always like to apply it with the Makeup Forever brush 152 and I just get the product up in there and then just work it into my cheeks but in honesty, I always use two bronzers anyway. I always use a kind of a cream and then a little bit of a powder on. The brush I like to use the most is the Giorgio Armani. This is a bronzing brush, the biggest one. It's just the one I always, always use. And if I am bronzing, generally for the most this year, it's either been a Galan bronzer, this one being the Terracotta Four Seasons in Natural, which is beautiful. Or I have this NARS palette and I kind of concocted my own palette out of it, out of lots of different products. A few products from Makeup Geek in here, a few products from Iconic London which are totally, I need to get rid of those now, and Anastasia Beverly Hills, but this is the NARS Laguna bronzer. As everyone usually likes, it's an oldie and a goodie. I just like to apply just a touch more bronze. And I also like to use the bronzing powders to bronze down the neck. You can't really do that with cream products. For blush, I've got two, again, because I've used these two interchangeably and they're by far my favourites. First one being the Charlotte Tilbury First Love and I think this is probably my last year's favourite too. It's just my perfect colour. I absolutely adore it. If I'm going for cream then I'll go for the Kevin Aquan and this is in Prevella and Chanel which you've probably seen me use a lot but again this kind of creamy shade is exactly what I really like, like a nudie pink. For powder I'm one of those people that can give or take powder generally because I'm quite dry and I prefer the more dewy look. Sometimes I just leave it without but there are times when I've gone a little bit overboard with the oils and need a touch of powder and by far the best one that definitely works the best I think is the Laura Mercier translucent powder. It's just one that people talk about the most and for good reason. It's so brilliant. It doesn't cake and I like to use that on a damp tiny beauty blender and it just gets right into the inner corners of where I concealed and I just pat a little bit into there. For highlight, there are so many I could say, so, so many, but I think the one that looks the most beautiful on the skin, it doesn't look like powdery and too glitzy, it has to be the Dior Skin Nude Air Luminizer in 001. It's just absolutely beautiful. And my favourite brush, which is the Anastasia Bibbler Hills highlight brush, I think. Okay, eyeshadow. I would love to tell you there has been a palette that has blown my mind this year, but in honesty, I've used so, so many different things. I think it's mainly pots of eyeshadow that have been my favourite, which I can't believe I'm saying. If it had to be one palette I use the most, I'd probably say it was the Lorac Mega Pro 2, and there are so many insane shades in here that I've used a lot, and I highly recommend this palette. Absolutely love it, but I kind of feel like I used more of my pots of shadow than I did anything else. So I'm just going to use a few of those today just to kind of show you what my faves are. I mean, first up, I always like to use a really nice transition-y shade, like everyone else does. Something quite peachy, bronzy browns. So I often went for something like this in the Lorac palette. I'd use a bit of tawny, a bit of melon, a bit of sorbet. Just those three. Just something very subtle 
and a touch natural but you can find this in most palettes you could even use your bronzer for this and one of my favorite blending brushes as always is this one mac 217 and then pretty much any brush by zoeva is just a total winner i'm just going to go back in with a bit more of the brown shade intensify that a touch more and also just Make it a touch larger over the eye. Okay, I'm gonna move into a few of my different favorite pots. So we've got the Burberry Eye Color Cream. These are so beautiful. This is the one in mink. They're just like creamy, but not too, like they're super blendable, super easy to work. You just work your brush into it. It picks up the product the same way it would a powder really, but it just adds a little bit more kind of luminosity to the lids. So I'm just gonna apply that all over the lid. That's just a really super wearable everyday color. Love that one. Okay, and next up, probably my most worn eyeshadow of the entire year, and that is the Tom Ford Spice Pot. And I love just to kind of use it to deepen up the crease and add more of a deeper, creamier finish to the outer edge of this eye. It's almost like a really intense smoky look, but it catches the light beautifully. Oh, I love it so, so much. But one more product I wanna give a shout out to as well are the Chanel Pots. This is the Rouge Noir Illusion d'Ombre, if that's how you say it. But they come in a lot of different beautiful colors and this is one of my absolute favorites, the Rouge Noir, which had more of a purple tone. And recently I've literally just been using a little bit on a brush and going over more of the brown tones I've been using and it just creates a bit more of a purpley finish. I've done it quite a lot recently in videos because I really like the purple tones on the eyes. But these eyeshadows in general are such good kind of makeup kit keepers just to have there with you just for any look you want to go for they're beautiful and one last eyeshadow just to mention i have it inside my nars kit because i wanted to make sure this literally goes with me everywhere i go i take this nars kit because it's super flat to pack with me and it's this little shadow here this is out of a l'oreal palette the rose shade i'll leave it linked down below for you but this was like the lightest shade in that palette and i took it out of there put it in here because i knew i'd use it every single day and i do and it's my favorite inner corner highlight eyeliner if i'm using eyeliner it's usually the Tom Ford Eye Defining Pen because it's absolutely incredible. I like to use the longer end just to get a really, really good wink. For mascara, there are two big time standouts this year. If I didn't mention the Clarins Waterford Mascara, which is kind of like my favourite most of the time. But if I'm not using that, I'm using one of these two and it's the L'Oreal False Slash Sculpt. This just gets right into the root of the lash. It's super black, it separates, it lengthens, it volumizes. It is just one of those wonderful mascaras. It doesn't budge all day as well. It doesn't transfer, it's just an absolute winner. If not, then the Armani Eccentrico Mascara has been my absolute go-to. Again, it's very lengthening, um, but it also adds a bit more volume and really kind of thickens up the look of the lashes. Um, especially when I've got an LVL lash lift at the time, so my lashes are really kind of full and curled anyway. This just goes on absolutely beautifully. Quite a lot of times when I've taken Instagram pictures and I've had really nice lashes it'll be because I was wearing this and quite often I'd get compliments on it and I always think this is a winner, I need to use it more. For eyebrows hands down the best brush ever is this by Armani. It's their eyebrow brush pretty much. It's got a spoolie one end and the brush the other end. I don't use anything but this. And in terms of two products, I'd say nine months of this year were by far the Eye and Brow Maestro by Armani. This is one incredible eyebrow product. It's a wonderful deep chocolate brown. I like having dark brown and it just kind of stays put all day. It's a wonderful, wonderful shade. But for the past three months or so, I remembered how much I loved the Anastasia. I'm not sure whether it's Anastasia or Anastasia. I like to say Anastasia, I'm just gonna say that. The Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade, this is in chocolate as well. Yeah, so those two products I'd say are kind of interchangeably wonderful. I'm gonna go with Iron Brow Maestro for today, seeing as I I've used this the most this year. Okay, just to set the brows in place, my favorite brow grooming product has to be the Givenchy Mr. Brow Groom. It's not gonna budge. And the lips. And I'd probably say my favorite lip liner still would be either MAC Whirl or MAC Saw because I know that it's gonna give me the shade I really, really like. Probably my favorite lip products of the year. And they have to be the Anastasia Beverly Hills Liquid Lips. So I'm gonna use my favorite concoction, which is Crush. And like I said, when I use this, I don't usually even need to line the lips because it almost does it for you. Love that shade so much. <laughs> so I wear that mostly, if not I wear Pure Hollywood. If I just want a full color lip, I wear that. But I'm gonna go for the ombre lip, which is like my favorite thing to do this year. My favorite for that is the Milkshake shade. And all I do is just apply that to the center and then I use my finger to dab it in. 
And the final product on the face has to be the setting spray. Favourite by far is it, my favourite by far is the Urban Decay Makeup Setting Spray Long Lasting, which I think I'm about to run out of, which is just great. So good. And the final product to mention is this by Iconic London. I couldn't not mention it, seeing as I've literally used this every day for the past year. This is like my third now, I think. But inside here, it's just a really great concealing and contouring palette. And I like having this with me because I find it's that perfect finishing touch up when you finish all your makeup and you just want to do any last little bits. It's so, so good. Plus it has a massive mirror. So I like just to dip into these two concealer shades and just go over any other bits on the face that I feel just need that last little finish and that is it for my favorite makeup this year I'm gonna put on a bit of perfume and my perfume of choice this year there have been so many different perfumes I've loved and I'd probably say my favorite overall of all time as you probably know is the Victor and Rolf flower bomb extreme in the purple bottle it's my number one but this year especially for the past four months I'd say my one and only and the one I've had so many compliments on and I'm not stopped wearing is this one by Armani it's gonna be a lot of Armani in this video this is the Armani C Le Parfum there's a few different types there is the original Eau de Parfum and I think there's another one but this is Le Parfum and it's one with more amber notes in it and it's just so divine anything amber absolutely love those scents so i'm gonna put on a bit of this so nice really shouldn't be spraying my jewelry i do that every day and regret it so with makeup out of the way we need something to talk about hair i guess i'm going to talk a bit about skincare after this as well but hair i'm going to do my hair now with my favorite thing so my favorite tool of the year by far is the gh i was about to say ghd like Givenchy. this is the ghd curling barrel I'm pretty sure it's like a 1.5 inch curling barrel i'll leave it listed down below where you can get this but this has been my hair tool of choice for the whole year it's amazing and for when i'm curling my hair my favorite heat protection spray and curling spray is this by ghd which i've used for about four years now and it's a ghd curl hold spray so not only does it heat protect it also kind of helps to set the curls that you're putting in with your heat so it's just like double whammy so that's why i really like using it okay finishing off the hair with a bit of hairspray i'm going to use a L'Oreal Studio Pro Boost It. I just find it's kind of the best hold hairspray without weighing down the hair. It isn't crusty and you can kind of brush it out as well. The best brush is this one from Tangled Teaser. I only ever use Tangle Teaser anyway. But this one with the handle, it's got so much hair in it. This one with the handle is by far my fave. Just a few other randoms. Let's carry on with hair while we're here. The mousse, my favourite mousse, is now the L'Oreal El Net Creme de Mousse. I've used this now for about five months. I think it's incredible. Really great at adding so much more volume. I just had a big chunk of this into my hair. Flip my hair upside down and really work it in. If you want to know kind of more about how I do my hair generally, then I have a big video about that that I'll try and leave linked on the screen now. Got a lot of these products in there. For oil, for into my hair. I love the L'Oreal El Vive. Extraordinary oil. It's just really nourishing. It just adds a really lovely kind of finishing layer to the ends of the hair that just make it feel super soft and super nourished and hydrated and not dry at all. Love it. In terms of shampoo, if I'm going away and I want to take one product with me that I know will really cleanse and clean the hair, this is what I take with me, the L'Oreal El Vive. I've gone through about three or four bottles of this now. Love this stuff. Again, I've done another video on this. I'll leave on the screen. But this is just really nourishing, hydrating. It just really cleanses the hair thoroughly and it's like a shampoo conditioner in one. So you just need this one product and it does absolutely everything for you so it's just a super dream if you want to be like super quick in the shower and get your hair done if i'm not using that though the product that i use at home if i want a really good nourishing treatment cleanse is anything by pureology this is one of my favorites this is in the hydrate range in the purple but i also really like the turquoise color which is the strength cure i think which is really good for treating very damaged hair so if my hair is feeling really bad i use that if not i use this and it's just a really really good product this one and the conditioner Okay, that's it for hair. I've just got a few other bits now I want to talk about as like my favourites that really stand out this year. Deodorant. This is all I use. The Mitchum 48 Hour Flower Fresh. It's by far the best deodorant I've ever used. Since using this, I haven't had awful white patches. I haven't had any kind of feeling of like, oh, do I smell <laughs> at any point? Honestly, I can't recommend this anymore. It's so, so good. For tan 
This is quite a difficult one, but I think my favourite tan of the year has to be the Vita Liberata Phenomenal Tan. There are a few on this list of tans that I love, and they're all very, very similar, but this is the one I go back to probably the most this year, the Phenomenal Tan. It's just a really great colour for me. I love it. But if I'm tanning my face, this is what I use. It's a Zen Tan Fresh Face Tan, and I find it doesn't break me out, it doesn't make my skin too dry, and it adds such a great glowing tan all over my face. So I use this on my face, and then I use this all over my body, and kind of make sure it's all blended in around the edges and they're kind of like my miracle products. Favourite face mask of the year has to be this one from L'Oreal Paris. This is the detoxifying one in the black colour. They also do green and red and the idea is you can kind of multi-mask and do them in different areas, which I do and I love doing that. But if not, and I'm trying to be super quick, I just put this all over. This is my favourite in the black. All over and it's just quite brightening. It's just a really lovely mask to put on, it kind of just dries down, wipe it all away, my skin just feels a bit tighter, softer, cleaner. So nice. In terms of eye makeup remover, this is by far my favourite. I did a video with this product which was sponsored by Garnier and I was so happy to do it because I'm obsessed with this product. Still am, I've still been using it for about six, seven months now. It's the oil infused cleansing water and I find it takes off my eye makeup remover better than anything else and it's about 3 for this whole bottle. So it's literally one of like the biggest bargain products of my entire year. And favourite cleanser after that has to be the Elemis Biotech Skin Energising Cleanser. I just love this product, it's just really soft on the skin. It makes my skin feel super duper clean and I just feel like a little bit more awake whenever I use this. To be honest, I'm going to be doing like a full skincare evening routine so soon anyway, so I don't really want to go into any more skincare because my skincare routine has got pretty huge actually recently, so, so I feel there's no point in really mentioning it now or else this video is going to be ridiculous. So I really hope you enjoyed watching this video guys. Let me know what your favourite product of the whole year is, your number one product, down below in the comments. I'd love to find out what it is that you have loved so much this year. Maybe I'm not using it, maybe I am, hopefully I am. But if you're new here, please do hit the subscribe button, I'll leave it on the screen right now for you to hit. It would be great to have you come back. Thank you so much. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Mwah.